Hey Horror Hoes, it's your girl Samara, one half of the Horror Hoes Port Group Podcast and Book Club, here with another YouTube video. So I'm here to deliver what I promised on TikTok. I am going to be doing a reading vlog of Jackal by Erin E. Adams. All weekend, I guess I'll be reading this and I'm going to take you guys um, along with me. The time right now is about 10 a.m. on a Saturday, March 18th. I'm in my comfy lounge clothes, nice and warm. I have no plans for the weekend. The Horror Host Court Group, we have a book club meeting today at 1.30 p.m. EST. And I think my aunt wants to get brunch. I'm not so sure, but this right here, priority number one. I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna take you guys along with me, show you my reactions, let you know my animals' thoughts about it, good or bad, or meh. And yeah, let's get started. I send the letters and numbers. Standing in front of Mel's house, I know how different it is from the pictures she shared with me at closing. They fixed the roof, touched up the blue paint on the outside. They redid the walkway up to the front landing with field stones. I've never been here. We shared tons of pictures and had hours of video calls. This shouldn't be how I first see Mel's place in person. My need to stay away from this town robbed me of a happier meeting. I knock on the front door and it cracks open. The house beyond feels full. I press my ear to the door trying to discern who's at Mel's this early. A voice behind me alerts me a minute of time. Excuse me? A woman I've never seen before raises past me, creating baskets of laundry. I push the door wide open for her and she hurries through it. I follow after her. Melissa's house is packed. People crowd the halls and pile in the kitchen. They are all here to support the family. Or to get the real story. No one's crying. So I'm checking in. I'm about, like, I'm only like 50 pages into this. People have been calling me and distracting me, whatever. I just plan on turning my phone off after this one, after this check-in. But yeah, 50 pages into Jackal. I didn't say this before, but it's basically about a young woman by the name of Liz who's, you know, been living in a nice big city life and now she's coming back home for her good friend's wedding to a town she kind of hates. She doesn't really like the people and she just never really wanted to go back, but she's doing it for a good friend. At some point during the wedding, uh, her friend's daughter um, gets kidnapped and all that stuff is like a piece of white fabric with some blood on it. So now they gotta figure out what's happening. By the way, this is apparently, this has been happening for a while now. Little black girls have been going missing in this town for years and turning up dead and whatnot. Uh, so I guess I gotta try to figure out what's going on. So there's a thing about this book that I see happening a lot lately, uh, especially in movies too, but it's been happening in books a lot lately as well, is the whole woman goes back to her small town for whatever special event and um, she hates the town. She's been the outcast, blah blah splee trope, like the outcast returns home. I honestly cannot stand this trope anymore. It gets on my nerve. I'm reading, you know, I'm getting past it. I'm reading through it. I'm going to get past. I'm going to finish. But I just want to say like how annoyed I am by it. Like why can't people just be like, oh, I grew out of my small town. You know, maybe they had a normal life and they just happened to grow out of their small town, right? And they just don't want to be here anymore. But no, you have to be an outcast. You have to only have one friend who's finally getting married because you see this in Jackal. I saw this in, um, there's another one called... Oh, when the reckoning comes, stuff like that. Like I've been seeing a lot lately and I actually can't stand the awkward black girl trope. It drives me crazy. I don't know why. It just keeps getting shoved in my face. So yeah, thought I'd do a check in on that, but the writing's good. Uh, things I should start off with a bang and my attention is still like pretty well kept with this book. So I'm still anticipating good things. Check in with you later. Okay, quick update. It's afternoon now. Not exactly sure what time it is, but I just want to say this book, this book right here, all kinds of messed up. I'm now on page 100. That's a little less than what? Like a little less than halfway. So I'm up here according to the bookmark. I don't know if you guys can see that. The town is all kinds of messed up. This little girl who's nine years old, little black girl, has gone missing at her parents' wedding. They found a strip of cloth with blood on it. And usually, you know, when a little girl or a little kid goes missing, they issue an Amber Alert and the cops are on the scene. Like, you don't have to wait any amount of hours or anything like that. So the cops are on the scene, but they're not really looking that hard. Like, there are no dogs, FBI's not involved. It's just like the local cops and they're all like lackadaisical about it. Um, the gr the white grandfather's cracking jokes in the name of like keeping spirits up. The white uncle, he's just like not really into it, even though he's like on the police force. And so 
his family should be top priority but he's acting like it's not almost as if he doesn't really want to find the girl and then the mom who was white is just not realizing like dang they're not looking for her because she's black isn't that right like i'm pretty sure they're not looking for her because she's a little black girl super messed up everybody seems really suspicious in this book everyone except for the main character anyway but i have reason to believe that all of these white cops and even the white grandfather probably has something to do with this little girl's disappearance and maybe even the disappearance of all the other little black girls that have been going missing and turning up mutilated and dead so i'm probably just gonna switch to audiobook just to give my eyes a bit of a rest also so i can cook myself some sort of meal and uh, i'll check in with you if anything new pops off hey quick check in um we're starting to get these little snippets i guess into the killer's mind and like starting to learn the story from their point of view which is really weird i'm on page 132 and yeah there's been some developments happening um got a little bit of a snippet into the mind of the killer i guess there's more than one and it looks like our main character liz is like the main focus for these killers like they like one of them wants her and they're waiting on her to return to the woods and I, I'm so confused right now I am extremely confused I have no idea where this book is going I thought I knew like I have some suspects in mind which I'm not gonna really say because I don't want to spoil the book for people but yeah I guess I won't know until I finished the book if I was right or not if the person that I suspect is being like the killer or at least one of the killers is the right one but yeah the little black girl Caroline um the main character's goddaughter I guess um is still missing and Caroline's starting to get her little flirt on randomly while she's supposed to be worried about her goddaughter she's getting a little flirt on with the town hunk so, hmm, hmm, I don't know, girl. If you're trying to go back to New York, we ain't trying to flirt with no men and we ain't seen in forever. I'm just saying. Okay, y'all, I am halfway through this madness, okay? Like, look, look at that, look at that. I'm halfway through, look at it. I'm doing things, even though I took a long ass nap and it's almost 9 p.m. now. <laughs> but I am on page like 159, 160, chapter 11. Um, and a bit of a supernatural element has been introduced, seemingly. Um, I don't know if it's human or what, but we are going to find out because we are going to finish this damn book this weekend for sure. Uh, so I think I'm going to probably read another chapter or two and then I'm going to call it a night here and I will check in with you all in the morning. Good morning. No makeup today. I look crazy. Please ignore that. Also, my other pair of glasses broke and I had to wear my old ones. It's, it's a whole mess, okay? Quick update. <laughs> I'm on chapter 17 of Jackal. Uh, something new has developed. All of my past theories I had before, throw them out the window. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. So right now I'm gonna actually head to the nail salon because I'm looking real grody. I'm gonna get my nails done. Um, and I'm gonna actually listen to this on audio while that happens so I can continue to read because I'm determined to finish this book today in a timely fashion so I can relax and watch TV but yeah so my uber slash lift I don't I forget which one I booked it's on its way I head into the mall get my nails done and I will check in with you guys later hey y'all I'm back and I got my nails done now I don't look like a ragamuffin while I was getting my nails done I was listening to the audiobook and so I've gotten pretty far I'm on page two on page 276, things have escalated. We've gotten more from the, I guess like the murderer's point of view. So now we're looking for the little girl and one of the white guys in here decided that they should all split up and everybody agreed to it, despite there being two black people, two, two whole black people out of like five that are in the little search party. They all agreed to split up. No, 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 no. This is how I know this is fiction. Ain't nobody black splitting up. Hell, blood, we're gonna let the cops handle this shit. We're not, we're not, 
out in the middle of the woods in the middle of the night no no ma'am no ma'am no sir I, mm -mm. I don't have that many pages left I think I have about what like 50 pages or so left in this book I mean I only got this little bottom part if you guys can see but yeah I don't have that many pages left I really need to know what's going on it's gonna it's probably gonna be revealed in like the last five pages what's going on but you know I'm still here for it I'm still invested this book is so freaking good like I'm so glad people suggested it to me it's so good like I recommend it already yeah yeah so I'm probably gonna finish this up and I'll be back with my final thoughts what blackula I'm gonna give it how many blackulas I'm gonna give it and yeah check in with you later okay I'm back and I finished Jackal finally what can I say about this book First of all, I'm giving it four blackulas. Okay, four blackulas. I think that's pretty good. That's pretty high. I mean, it kept my attention for one, despite being that irritating trope of girl goes back to town and girls are missing and she has to solve the mystery. Blah blah spleet. Uh, that not a whole point, a whole like blackula off because I can't stand that trope. Moving past that though. <laughs> It was overall a really good book, like I said, well written, and it's so much more than like a supernatural horror. It's basically commentary on missing black girls in America and how police and the justice system just are not working for them. They are not top priority and the cycle just keeps continuing. And at some point, someone has to stand up and break that cycle. And apparently in this book, it was our main character, Liz. So yeah i really enjoyed it i highly recommend it great book good characters lots of suspicious characters i knew nothing like i did not know where this book was going i thought i knew but it turned out to be completely different than what i originally believed it to be and i'm not mad at it i love that about this book so yeah for blacklist i highly recommend it you guys should read it I hope to read more from this author. They were great. I'm looking forward to more horror books from this author. Like I'm just hope they continue to write in the genre for sure. Anyway, that's it for this reading vlog. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Click the little notification bell down below. Follow us on all of our socials. And don't forget, horror hoes never say die. Bye.